Tom, we asked the U.S. Army to take us along on an air mission. They accepted. We discussed the danger. We were aware it was a rocky airspace after all. We weren't cavalier about it. Then things just started to happen. It was supposed to be a routine Army aviation mission, and it turned out to be one of the most dangerous missions they've launched here so far. Four giant Vietnam-era Chinook twin-rotor helicopters lifting giant sections of a steel bridge to be erected inside Iraq over the Euphrates River, a 17,000-pound chunk of steel dangling beneath us that made our small armada a low, lumbering, and inviting target. Down below the villages of the Iraqi countryside, some but not all had been visited by American troops headed north toward Baghdad. Our lead chopper pilot remembers seeing a pickup truck driver stop and wave while another man pulled back a tarp, stood up in the back of the truck and fired an RPG, a rocket propelled grenade. Rifle fire came from yet another Iraqi. Yeah, we took fire on the way in. All four choppers dropped their load and landed immediately, the grenade wound clearly visible. In minutes, the weather closed in and a round trip one day mission became a three day stay. So look at this coming right. Of all the places to ditch four choppers in the moon-like desert of Iraq, this might have been the safest. The armored mechanized platoon of Lieutenant Eric Nye quickly surrounded us with tanks and Bradleys. Infantrymen took up position, protecting four vulnerable birds parked shoulder to shoulder on a plot of land considered hot for the presence of armed Iraqis nearby. Lieutenant Nye told us this was not yet the war he had been briefed on prior to the invasion. He estimated he had killed 65 Iraqis just a couple of miles from here, but they were hardly soldiers. How would you describe the quality of the Iraqi soldiers you've encountered? Guys in, in pickup trucks with mounted uh, machine guns and RPGs. Looks like they got together a group of civilians and said, you know, here, defend this field. With the M1s and this, uh, rolling in against those guys, it really wasn't a fight, it was more of a a mop up. Life in this patch of Iraqi desert without a name became all about survival inside a hollow grounded Chinook helicopter. As a colossal sandstorm arrived like an orange wall in the sky, forcing the crew inside for a card game. It lifted this morning, just long enough for us to get out. Brian Williams, NBC. Uh, two of our four helicopters were hit by ground fire, including the one I was in. No kidding. Uh, RPG and, and AK-47. We want to share with you a great moment that took place here in New York last night. The story actually started with a terrible moment a dozen years back when the helicopter we were traveling in was forced down after being hit by an RPG. U.S. Army Command Sergeant Major Tim Turpak was responsible for the safety of Brian Williams and his NBC News team after their Chinook helicopter was hit and crippled by enemy fire. Both men, both Rangers fans, have been reunited for the first time in 12 years for tonight's game. I want to apologize. I said I was traveling in an aircraft that was hit by RPG fire. I was instead in a following aircraft. We all landed after the ground fire incident and spent two harrowing nights in a sandstorm in the Iraq desert. This was a bungled attempt by me to thank one special veteran and by extension, our brave military men and women, veterans everywhere, those who have served while I did not, I hope they know they have my greatest respect and also now my apology. And when I was down there, I used to be a firefighter, volunteer firefighter in New Jersey. I was wearing the boots that I've owned since 1976. I had them pulled up as waiters. When you look out of your hotel room uh, window in the French Quarter and watch a, a man float, float by face down, when, when you see bodies that you last saw in Banda Aceh, Indonesia, and swore to yourself that you would never see in your country. My week, uh, two weeks there, was not helped by the fact that I accidentally ingested some of the flood water. I became very sick with dysentery. Our hotel was overrun with 
gangs. I was rescued in the stairwell of a five-star hotel in New Orleans by a young police officer. We are friends to this day. And uh, it just was, uh, it was, uh, I look back at, at total ag agony. We were the questions around this, Lewis, are related to the fact that the French Quarter, the original high ground of New Orleans, was actually not impacted by the floodwaters that overwhelmed much of Katrina, much of New Orleans during Hurricane Katrina, rather. And a spokesperson for NBC did not respond over the last few days to questions about, hey, were Brian Williams' stories about Hurricane Katrina even true? A spokeswoman for the Louisiana Department of Health and Hospitals with regard to the dysentery claim said dysentery is not even one of the reportable diseases that we track, but that water sources are a possible transmission point for dysentery. Dr. Brobson Lutz, a former New Orleans health director who manned an emergency medical services trailer that was set up in New Orleans, a block from his house in the French Quarter, said. He was a fan of Brian Williams, but was dubious of Williams's claims. Quote, we were never wet. It was never wet. And as far as dysentery, he said, I saw a lot of people with cuts, bruises and such, but I don't recall a single solitary case of gastroenteritis during Katrina or in the whole month afterward. This is all part of a new leadership effort by Iran suddenly claiming they don't want nuclear weapons. What they want now is talks and transparency and goodwill. The American president says it's OK. Keep your nuclear program to keep your homes warm. Stop enriching uranium toward weapons. How do you react? Who is the right judge for that? Any entity except for the IAEA? All IAEA reports indicate that Iran has had no deviation. We have said on numerous occasions that our activities are for peaceful purposes. The agency's cameras videotape all activities that we have. Did Iran build the atomic bomb and use it? You must know that because of our beliefs and our religion, we are against such acts. We are against the atomic bomb. We believe bombs are used only to kill people. go into greater detail. We see these beautiful pictures at night from the decks of these two U.S. Navy vessels in the eastern Mediterranean. I am tempted to quote the great Leonard Cohen. I'm guided by the beauty of our weapons. Um, and they are beautiful pictures of, uh, of fearsome armaments making what is for them a brief flight over to this airfield. What did they hit? What are you convinced? 